Hello and welcome back to another series for the group stages of the International 2017. It is Group B. I'm Shiva. I'm here with Sindarin. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and uh, LFY, top of the group, yep. Group B. And Cloud9, bottom of the group, Group B. Are they actually complete bottom? No, or they're now shared. They're they, tied they're, for bottom. Yeah, they're tied for bottom with Hellraisers and Digital Chaos. So one in five for all of them. And LFY are eight zero. So okay. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's quite a difference. Judging from that, LFY should be clear favorites. They've had yeah. some. Some of their wins have been pretty, like very fast. And they've others had have the been fastest game against uh, VP earlier today. Yeah, they stomped minutes. them in like 15. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Uh, Cloud9, I cast a set of yesterday. I think only one set though. Um, they looked a bit shaky. I think it was against OG, I believe. Yeah. Uh, and apart from that, I don't think I've seen their games. Let me just quickly check who they've played. Uh, they played against OG, Newbie, and this morning and they Pro. had they tied with Virtus Pro. Yes, I I only saw the OG games, I think. So, but I I remember in those games like uh, Cloud9 showed promise, but they just had a couple of moments where they were lacking uh, a key timings or item usage or whatnot. Yeah. Uh, especially the game against OG, they were lacking detection in one or two fights that could have gone very differently. But they didn't get like destroyed or anything, no. so I, I think the score might be a bit misleading for how one-sided the series could get. I think so too, because the teams that they have faced, it's, uh, I mean, OG newbie VP, you know, those are not yeah. easy teams to face. I love why they face Execration, Hellraisers, who arguably are a little bit easier than the teams uh, so far. Yep. Uh, granted, they also face Virtus Pro and IG, and they also won those games and it made it look easy, but uh, I, I agree, I think this is going to be more even than the scores. Uh, portray it to be. So far though, we've got a Batrider and an Earthshaker for uh, Forever Young, and uh, we have Cloud9 with the Sand King Silencer. What do you make of the opening? Uh, this is kind of becoming the standard meta of this group stage. There's a lot of focus on Silencer and Batrider in general. Uh, could have even, wouldn't have surprised me to see LFY picking them together. The Silencer has become popular where you pick a key initiator that just begins the fight and then you global silence and get that one key pick. We've seen it work with Legion, we've seen it work with Batrider, uh, we're seeing it with Sanking this time. It's a similar logic. You stun into Epi and then global at the same time. And it's also a good counter engage in a way, right? Like the Batrider is going to yeah. jump last of someone and you can instant global. And then that could work as like a pseudo save instead of Oracle T or something like that. So I think Cloud9 are slowly adapting to what they're seeing other teams have success with, and then we'll see if they can play it as well themselves. Okay, so far um, this morning when uh, when LFY was facing IG, um, Inflame played Batrider. Crazy mm -hmm. good, like actually crazy good. And then there was another game where it was Afu playing Earthshaker, and they paired it up with an Ancient Apparition, and they just owned all lanes. They just ran around your fishery call feet. Nobody escaped. There was it, they were uh, they were a death ball together with the two of them. That's uh, surprising. It's not even that good of a duo. They must be really good at like timing their movements. Blitz was very surprised as well. He was not yeah. expecting it. Like this was the most active ancient operation that he uh, he had seen, uh, and it it worked out well. They obviously also had cores that were able to be left alone mm -hmm. because they did just roam with the two of them, and they didn't really care too much about the rest of the lanes. Uh, but they make it. They made it look like super, super strong. So it's still in the pool. They could still pick that up uh, if they want to. It's not the best matchup against Silencer. Uh, AA has the problem that if you if you throw out the ice blast and then you, the global gets cast, you actually can't release it. So it just flies off the map and doesn't oh, even yeah. get cast. Uh, so you need to be a little bit careful with that. But if they're comfortable with that support duo, then uh, by all means they can run it. Yeah, they've been very uh, well. They've played a lot of different heroes. They've uh, shown a great variety of heroes. We actually have, um, I think it was Monet that has played a different hero every single game so far. Oh, eight games. Eight games, eight heroes. Nice. Yeah. And uh, Super has played uh, seven heroes, eight games. So, seven different heroes. It's the wings games. of this year. Maybe? Yeah, it looks, <laughs> looks like it. The thing Early about so LFY, uh, I, I can't remember which tournament it was, if it was the Kiev Major, where they were also like just completely destroying in the start and then uh, they got figured out toward the later stage of the tournament and, yeah. and eventually got beaten because their drafting pattern and their hero pools were very predictable and small. Um, especially, Yeah, well, if they have that many heroes, probably. <laughs> yeah. uh, in that stage, they were running super a lot on, I think it was Death Prophet and Dragon Knight, I believe. They had those two like pushing-type mid-heroes that they really were playing around, and then teams started banning both, and they kind of fell flat. 
But if their hero pools are that big this time, it's it's very promising. LFY were destroying games until they started getting banned out. They were winning very fast, playing great early games, uh, very good at making the right uh, movements with their heroes to get good lanes, good lane matchups. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna see if they can do it here. Shadow Shaman, that's a way of pushing, and they don't need one mid. And uh, nice uh, lane harassment as well. Mm -hmm. So for Cloud9, what's important do you feel like this game? If you know that it's gonna be a lot of push already coming from LFY. Uh, control with Earthshaker. You got already the silencer, as you said, to, to counter a lot of that as well. I think you need to make sure that you can fight back. If you're playing against a team like this and you play very slow and greedy, I think they're gonna like just run you over too fast and you don't really get to play the strategy you want later on. Mm -hmm. So being able to match them somewhat, it doesn't mean they have to play as early game centric, but having heroes that can can turn fights around and and, uh, and counterplay is, is really good. Or even better, maybe, heroes that can just jump on the opponent when you have Silencer. I like this pick a lot, because now they have two ways of using the global. They can both Sand King and Legion can initiate. And the Legion Commander is a multi-purpose pick. It can purge off the Lasso. It can purge off Shackles and Hex. Uh, overall, I think this, just theoretically, looking at the draft, this is maybe the best hero that was in the pool out of anything. So if Cloud9 played this hero very well, this could turn out to be the pick of the game, actually. When looking at this right now, this is a genius choice. Do you feel like she's going to have an okay time on the lane if it's going to be Shadow Shaman plus one? Uh, you can always solve it by bringing up a little bit of help yourself, uh, or they can aim to have the Legion Commander in a matchup against Batrider. That's another benefit of the hero. It actually does totally fine in that lane. It even wins the lane. Uh, Legion beats Batrider in a one-on-one, -on -one because you can't really use Sticky Napalm for anything. It can just be purged off by uh, press the attack, and then you go Orb of Venom, and you just run at the Batrider and hit him. Spadrider deals like almost no damage when he doesn't have Napalm on. He's like 40 base damage. Yeah. And Legion has maybe like 65 and a stout shield. <laughs> uh, you're not winning that. Troll Warlord. Interesting. Yeah, that's, that's a hero I haven't seen yet. That's a Monet yeah, hero. That's actually the first time that he uh, copies something. Oh. They had uh, in the second game they played against uh, Execration. They had that. They uh -huh. paired it up together with, um, with a Pagna and a Dazzle. And then Earthshaker as well. All right. But Could be a Pugna man ban, uh, ban here then. Normally, uh, don't you normally want to pair something up with a troll to have something else that hits really fast as well? Yeah. Uh, it's like, it's one of those things where it's really good synergy, but they need to be careful that they don't like lose out on other stuff because they style themselves blind on we need to have synergy with uh, Battle Trance. The problem is, right now, they don't necessarily have the best heroes at dealing with Naga. Um, so if they... That's what I could see the appeal in a Pugna pick, for example. You can go Aghanims and then you have the life drain against Naga Illusions, which is actually a really nice counter the entirety of the game once you get it. Um, it will allow them to push really fast as well with both Pugna and Shaman. And then, yeah, the downside is doesn't synergize very well with Battle Trance. Alternatively, you can put the troll both mid and safe lane. That's one of the benefits of the hero. So there's options of even getting another carry and just playing this on super in the mid lane or just getting a standard hero mid that uses the battle trance well, like Templar Assassin, Shadow Fiend, those types of heroes could definitely work out here. Yeah, when they, when they did play the Pugna, it was indeed on the mid lane, so Super yeah. played it that time, and uh, yeah, we haven't seen Super play Troll yet, so they might as well continue the trend of playing different heroes every game in that case. Yes, the the Pugna is maybe not the best against Silencer, but I can mm -hmm. still I can still see it being a good choice this game. And if I ban out the Razor, do you think that says anything about what they are going for mid? Because is a uh, Death Prophet is supposed to be well, Razor is supposed to be counter to Death Prophet, right? There's two ways of looking at it. One is that they want a hero mid that Razor would beat, like Dragon Knight, which was banned here by Cloud9. And the other one is they want to protect themselves from getting aggro duel slash tri lane, where the Troll Warlord has a bad matchup against Razor. Since they could be thinking, okay, Cloud9 want to enforce this Legion versus Bat matchup. Mm -hmm. And if they manage to do that, we need to at least not be completely destroyed in our troll lane. And Razor is one of the absolute worst uh, matchups he can have in any lane. So uh, could be that. Could be the DK that they wanted, which is now banned out as Cloud9 claim the Mirana. Yeah. Which puts Sand King and Silencer on support more or less guaranteed. And this is an Envy Naga, I think. Yeah, he has could... played Naga before as well. They could technically pay, play carry silencer as well and then support naga sanking but that sounds really bad this game i don't think that's what they're gonna do if they, you think fata morana at the moment yeah i think so i could make a joke there fata morana fata likes that hero he so does there's the death there's okay death well, that's another yeah as i mentioned a classic hero for super yeah. uh now they don't really have any synergy with battle trance but 
the upside of a hero like DP playing into Silencer is that if you have precast your ulti, the global doesn't hurt you as much as it does a lot of other mid heroes that can't cast actively cast the spells. As long as it's precast, you do a lot. Um, needs to be a little bit careful. There's actually a lot of bursts this game that could kill him off, and I think if this game goes just a bit late, they will struggle to deal with this Naga of Envy. So, I like Cloud9's draft in this game if they get off to a good start. I think this might be one of LFY's, on paper, just draft-wise, harder games they'll have to play. Alright, so if you wouldn't uh, see the teams, you'd say actually Cloud9 is better draft? Mm. Not entirely it's, convinced. It, it's better in some phases, that's the point. Like It's it's hard to just say that the this draft is just flat out better, but I think if a subset of of things happen that aren't like very unlikely, then it, it will get better at some point, I think. Okay. Uh, LFY's might be better early on when Shaman is 6 and DP is 6 and they start pushing these towers. Uh, but if Cloud9 delay and get farm on their cores, I think they're going to overtake the game like, around minute 20, 25, and it will get difficult for LFY. Now, the thing is, LFY have a tendency of winning their games in the first 20 minutes. So yeah. If they can perform to that level, as they have in many other games, then uh, they should still be in a good position. We'll see how it goes. So earlier today, we started doing predictions on stream. We didn't do it yesterday, and I thought I, it was a really good them, idea. So you got to tell me. Oh, you don't have them at all? No, because I have the. I, this is the account of uh, PGL, so it's uh, it's a Oh, I see. Account. Okay. Well, I'll just I'll just go over my selections, and then yeah, people yeah. can go for them if they like. Yeah, so okay. I think first triple kill will be likely to go to Death Prophet or Troll. We're gonna go for Death Prophet. That could definitely happen. Team with most runes picked up. It's almost like a coin flip. I think. Mm. I think it's gonna be LFY because I think they're gonna rotate a lot more. Yeah, LFY have been very good at moving around. So let's do them. I like that. Player with highest total magic or pure damage done to heroes at game end. I think that's Death Prophet. Magic or pure? That's not counting her ultimate at all, then. I think the Marana has a good chance of this as well. A lot of magic damage, I guess. Yeah. If he goes the Agonist build, which he might not do. This is actually a hard one, but I'm starting to run out of time. Let's uh, let's do Marana. Cro right. Fingers crossed for that. Number of Ancient Caps stacked by 30. This is an Eternal Envy team, so they might want to do that. <laughs> but he has a hero that can farm them. I actually think there's going to be very few. I'll go with... Zero to five on this one. All right. Yeah, I don't think they're really going to stack very much on the ancients. So okay, fighting. that's that. All right. Well, let's see if you're uh, correct at the end. Although I do think the predictions like register um, not properly or something. Is the bug still there? I think it worked for me earlier today at least. Every game right. worked fine for me. All right. So the runes grabbing uh, went fairly uh, uneventful for uh, both teams. We did have a yep. bit of uh, a stroll in the enemy jungle for Cloud9, but. Nothing really uh, to speak of. We have Sand King sitting bottom, so we are going to have an aggressive trialing coming out from Cloud9. Mm -hmm. uh, they did want to pitch that Legion commander against the Batrider in the end. I think this is this is what they wanted, so then we'll see how this bottom lane goes. Uh, a lot of the times when you run aggro trials, it's a bit of a rock, paper, scissors thing, like, are you next leveling the opponent? And then they're like, uh, we think you're going here, so we're going to do the opposite. And you just like, yeah. Double mind games. Exactly, like who mind games who the most, but... Uh, as, as far as it looks here, I think Cloud9 got what they came for. So, let's see if they can pull this lane off. There's no small camp available to be pulled for the Radiant. That one was blocked by an Observer Ward, which is very important when you're on aggro trialing. So, Cloud9 have definitely prepared for this exact situation. Mm -hmm. And if neither team gets to pull, I like this quite a bit for Cloud9 because of the other matchups they're managing to get. So. Alright. I want to check out other matchups, but it's very tricky because I feel like this might this is the lane burst out. Any time now. Yeah. Uh, so the other matchups are Legion Commander versus Bat Rider. Yep. And uh, we got the Marana going up against the Death Prophet as Pilai die. He's actually stuck. He is stuck. This is first blood. All right. DDC gets it. A little bit of a snipe there, but sure. Well, it wasn't a bug. It counts. It counts. <laughs> Very nice Fisher. Yeah. And very surprisingly as well, so I'm trying to keep a little bit track of what's happening in the other lanes. This yeah. top lane, Batrider, is doing very well. Better than I thought he would. Um, it, in Flames, uh, Bat is crazy good. Yeah. Ooh, oh, Afu. Afu is in trouble. I actually think he will end up dying. Or not. He yeah. saves uh, the day at the stroll here. Monet looking to maybe get a return kill on the Sand King. Can DDC do anything? He's got another zap up in one second, and he has not got... Yes, he does have the range. Just barely gets in there. Yeah. Very nice from LFY. Yeah, so the way the way I was predicting this top lane to go, 
depends on Legion Commander actually getting to his side shop. <laughs> and he's being constantly pushed out by by Inflame here, so he hasn't managed to get over there and buy an Orb of, uh, an orb of Venom, which is very integral to Legion's success in this kind of lane. Now he's got the, the stick already, so he has got that yep. um, buffer, if you will, in case he does get uh, Dove Pond. We'll see how, how it ends up panning out. So far they're kind of breaking even top and mid, mid and then well, yeah. the, the bottom lane is definitely favoring LFY with these two kills. CS-wise, Naga is having a great time though, 12 against the 6 of Troll, so it's not all bad for Cloud9 in the bottom lane. And overall, they're actually, yeah, the game is pretty much dead even, even though they're two kills behind, so they're getting what they want. Because is uh, Cloud9 at some point, do you feel like they would rotate away from this bottom lane? Like, when did they lose too much? Like, giving two kills obviously was, was slightly painful, but as you said, it didn't make that much difference for NV himself. Uh, it's a bit hard to say. I think it comes down to what happens now. If this goes wrong, then they might have to leave, but right now they actually have good counterplay potential. This Riptide spell is very powerful on level 1 nowadays. It's got buffed in one of the latest patches. Mm -hmm. And in Tri vs. Tri lanes, if you hit Riptide on multiple targets, it's it's very good. So LFY need to be a bit careful when they engage with this Fissure and Shackle combo. Oh, they're actually just going to run in. Oh, the Fissure kind of failed here. Definitely. Maybe at least stopping uh, AY from coming close, but they realized it wasn't uh, having the kill potential they wanted it to be have. What is happening here? There's a big dive here. Super does not get the kill. Fata is able to juke behind the tree, but uh, he is able to force him back. Yeah, Fata Forces had a fairy fire. There's a TPN from AUI though. Yeah, that's what you get when you dive this far yeah. this early. Little Super bit is in a there. pretty bad position Ooh. right now. Oh no! This burrow strike though, and he's very speedy. This death prop does take a lot of damage from the tower, and that might actually this might this be. This arrow is hard to. Oh, he mistimed the arrow as uh, well. The bounty rune. Uh, Super is still doing okay. He's got an earth shaker to back him up. In comes Pilai Die. He's got the curse available, and the Fisher is there as well, making sure that nobody is catching Super at all, and he's fine. There's even a shrine in like 40 seconds, which Super is able to take, and that means that he doesn't even need to go back to base. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a big miss here from Cloud9 to get that big kill. When Super dives this far and is out-leveling Fata, getting that counter kill will bring Fata back to even in mid. But they, the Burrow Strike came up just short, and then I think Fata with the arrow angle... I like the time when he shot the arrow, because that's one of those moments where the, the Death Prophet has to choose between cutting to the right, so not going upstairs at all, or getting hit on the stairs. But the arrow was too far on the right, so he actually had a path up the stairs as well. And managed to get out. Oh, Pilot Eye's been cut off here by Afu, and he's kind of just circling around the shrine. Yeah, buying time for Super to come in to help kill, and Pilot Eye's just gonna try to deny himself to neutrals. Not gonna happen, though. Close call. Close call, indeed. Good kill. Nice kill. Extra farm for uh, for Super. There, and a bit of extra struggle for Cloud9, as they're now 4 0. So, the bit of, uh, well, the, the, the bit of evenness we had in the lanes earlier, that's gone. Well, Cloud9 are doing very well top, at least. This Legion Commander is top of the net worth, 10 CS ahead of the bat. Mm -hmm. And MSS, I think, can come up very big. What happens when these tri lanes face each other is that often the supports in the game get very low leveled, all of them. And that's the type of thing that Legion Commander can just feed on because of how powerful Overwhelming Odds is. Uh oh, uh, Envy is stuck. stuck. Yep, oh, Afu. Finds a way out. Let's get another that's a new Fisher available in a second. Doesn't that? This isn't needed. DDC's there with uh, the Zap again. Five and oh, there's the score. And we have got ourselves uh, Legion Commander finding the Bat Rider, forcing out the Shrine. Nobody dies there. Gonna close call multiple times now, but. Yeah, okay. Is it, uh, this is actually. This, is, this, is, this ain't good for Cloud9. I didn't realize how much they're getting out leveled on supports. They're a full level behind on both Sanking and Silencer, oh, so. Geez. Now they might have to dis. Oh, engage, first jewel! Yep, wow. Should be a win as well. Yeah, Afu, uh, I think. I don't know what he was trying to do there. He didn't have the Observer Ward in his infantry then. He only had a sentry, so. I think he wanted to steal the bounty rune, but uh, AUI was there. Yeah. So. But that's big. They What Cloud9 need here is they need to get their supports a game. When this aggro trialing goes this poorly for the supports and they get this low level, they have to rotate to find their sixes. And that's why Silencer has gone top now together with Naga. They're going to look to pull up here. And the Legion, who is very high level, now can now match up fairly well in that bottom lane instead. Okay, this does mean they're playing a level 4 Naga instead of a 7 bat top. Yeah, you can already feel the pain, but at least Bat, uh, Bat Rider is uh, getting pushed back a bit by that silencer. Uh, well, 
was because Silencer went to pool and Inflame knew exactly what was happening. Uh, oh, it's yeah, actually have a lasso as well, so that might actually be Naga Siren dead. He doesn't have anything. He can't do anything. There's no way he's going to get out of this one. He shouldn't be able to get out of this one. No. Just in case, you never really know. I don't really ever want to steal the deal when it's uh, when there's end to be involved. But he uh, held his mirror image for so long. And then I, I think he didn't believe that Batrider had lasso skilled. And then when he finally gets mirror image off, he's down to already 20% HP, and it's very easy for Batrider to run him down. Fata skills ultimate. Yeah. Uses it immediately. Got intimidated here at leap on cooldown. Yeah, he has leap level one, so it doesn't actually get him away from the uh, spirit siphon at all. So, oh, nice rotation coming out with that moonlight shadow straight away, though. Let's see if this works out. Super this is, is in a, a lot kill. of trouble, they find and it. he's being very greedy because he thinks he can get a kill. They might be able to turn this around. I don't think so. That there's a jewel available as well. And this death prophet is. Should be done for! He's doing a lot of damage with the Shackle coming out as well! Death Prophet ends up going down, but so does the Legion Commander. Burrow Strike, Afu, taken down. DDC trying to run away from this one. He's got himself a killing spree to his name, so that would have been a large gold bounty, but Cloud9 is not going to die for that clever choice as well. They take two, lose the Legion, but that's okay. Good trade. Yeah, they, that's a nice multi-purpose Moonlight, where it looks like it's a defensive one, and then you also use it aggressively at the same time. Those kind of plays are very difficult to read on the map. Yeah. Um, so, they made the most out of that. Nice for Cloud9. They definitely needed that as well. The game was already starting to spiral a bit out of control. Now they've... They've managed to stabilize at least just a little bit. They find a kill on Monet down here as well now with the next duel. That would be really good for them. There's a bottom... Rana coming in with a haste rune. Monet is actually dead already. <laughs> he just they... doesn't know it yet. We'll see if that's the case. And the burst strike comes out, the jewel hits, and a double star. So yeah, he's, Good he's dead. But not yeah. enough. Second, uh, second jewel for MSS here. And how's Envy doing? So Envy has been just rotating into the jungle here to farm with his mirror images and kind of leaving the top lane alone. He's giving a lot of respect to the Fat Rider, who is extremely farmed. So that's understandable. Highest net worth in the game currently is in flame on the top lane. He went for a drums first. Um, yep. It's interesting to note that uh, previous game where he was Batrider, he went for the Rod of Athos first. Rod of Athos first? Yes. Hang on, I've seen nobody else do that. That's interesting. He was, Rider. Up he was up against the Lycan, and there wasn't that much lockdown. So I see, okay. That was probably the, the reason, but it, Could was be, a, yeah. it was an Athos. It was, fun. it was a fun game. Not so fun for the team that they faced, though. Shackle. Is it going to be enough? Arrow misses and this Legion Commander tries to run. Not gonna happen. Mega kill streak for the Shadow Shaman. This is a walking pot of gold. He's really farmed on the Shaman. He's gonna get level six and arcane boots now. And that is a position five hero, by the way. So he's yes. getting he's getting a lot in this position. Currently Afu, however, not the highest level ever on the Earthshaker from all of these rotations. He's been getting a couple Ooh. of kills and it's an assist, but level three. Not too much experience. That's this often happens with Earthshaker. Um, when you're playing it as a position 4 and roaming like this. If you don't leech, but you just show up with fissures, he's always at so high range that he doesn't get the experience from the creeps. But, you know what? I think it's better this way around than if Shaman was 3 and Shaker was 6, because now they can push towers. Yep. And, uh, I mean, you're still having Fissure. Level 2 or, or level 4, it doesn't matter. Your Fissure's still going to be useful. Ah, uh, it's a really strong spell on every level. Yep, and Here comes the, the wards are there. There's, there's a song available if... Uh, if Envy wants to set up for something, but he only gets uh, he gets Fada for help, but I think they would need some more if they want to try and take this to a fight. Arrow is going to fly, he's not going to hit though. Hit the Siege Creep, that's still good. I'm looking for a Fissure, just delaying this, but they, they're not able to, uh, to take this tower. That's this is a pretty good hold from Cloud9. They, they lost half a tower to the first Serpent Wards here, as it looks. Uh, maybe a little bit more. And Envy's farming up a decent amount of the ward, so he gets some gold for it. Played the mirror images nicely, just sending in one at a time to get a couple of hits in. Of course, since the wards were changed to having health based on attacks, the mirror images are actually very good at dealing with them. We need them top lane also. Um, the push was uh, halted by the troll warlord. Oh, Moonlight Shadow coming out. Is the detection available? I don't think so, but the siphon will still tell where he is. There's a shrine available as well, though, so Pilot Eye will be okay. And I'm not so sure if Super will be okay because there's a lot of people coming in. There's a song. Ooh, song he almost did that. I saw it had a light up, but I think he should have gone for that. Um, that's one of the nice things about having Marana and Naga together is that you can song into Arrow, and this is a combo that they have definitely played multiple times yeah. in the past. So 
That could have given them a key kill. Instead, though, they might find them here on the hillside. Nope, never mind. They're just gonna run away. Well, they had the, the vision still, also, that the DC was, uh, was around there. And now LFY are gonna give space to the Shaker in the bottom lane. He's got some space here. Looks like he will uh, die, however. Yeah, I was gonna say that. <laughs> space for the Shaker to... Space to get yeah. arrowed. Here we go. Yep. I mean, it's a very long cooldown for a spell for to use for an Earth Shaker level 4. You think that's worth it? I still think they should have used it for the DP, but it's it's a good kill. It's okay. alright. Oh. Slowing down the Shaker's dagger is, is nice. Yeah, that was an epicenter cancelled. AY was lassoed as well, and he died. Deathruff had uh, already had her ult up for the tower. And I think he... Did he have Arcane Rune? He did not have Arcane Rune. Okay, so this is a long cooldown. Shaman Wards, however, are available again. This tower will more than likely fall, or at least drop very low here. Well, they're trying to defend it. Oh, Cypher coming out, super. Arrow hits on DDC instead. Fada tries to try. deny, but doesn't get it. Leaps away to the high ground. Tower drops, and that was the first uh, tower of the game in the meantime. Oh, MSS in trouble here. Yeah, troll. Ah, I just scares the MSS away. Well, actually, they're not even close to having glass, obviously. So no, they and the, their blink dagger is not there either. And MSS is a very speedy hero. He just wants to teleport out. Time choice. So the rest of the team comes in. I mean, why not continue taking towers? Yeah, Cloud9 are starting to yield some map control here. It's it's difficult for their lineup after that aggro trialing went the way it did to to find these early fights. Their combination of heroes needs some time to come online now. At least they've got the global, and the the supports have caught up somewhat decently. But it's it's cost them two towers basically to come back in the game. And uh, now they're on the farming train. Envy is going straight Radiance with brown boots and has Clarity's running, but he might find a pretty bad surprise here. He doesn't have his ulti, so... No, there is uh, no dust again. Maybe DDC has some? No, there's no detection. Wow, they're actually they're getting away second, with this again. Yeah. This Moonlight Shadow has been really valuable. Yes. That would have been a kill. They're buying dust now. This is one of those moments where you're like, we need dust. <laughs> and then you have dust for the rest of the game. After and they, uh, on every hero. Okay. <laughs> every hero that has space. Uh, that is. But yeah, they, they definitely uh, lack some detection there for the second time around. Costly. But LFY is still sitting on the, the top three net worths in the game, so very comfortably farming away. And even though Cloud9 are making some good moves and uh, controlling what they can right now in, in this deficit, they're still not really catching up. Yeah. They're still falling behind every minute. It, that will change when Naga gets Radiance. This is a pretty natural Naga game. In many cases, you will fall a bit behind, similar to... Um, n well, in a way, similar to Alchemist, but then the Gold Graph just looks differently because he gets richer, but he's still weak until he gets very rich. If Naga gets this Radiance up and running, this game can can fall in Cloud9's favor. If, do you feel like he might be uh, also done taking farm from the rest of the team? I always find that when there's uh, Naga... The rest of the team gets four, or it's doesn't that matter that much with the oh, lineup envy. they have? Uh -oh. Wait a second. Oh, they failed oh. the fissure. They failed the fissure, so the song comes out. Unfortunate for me. Wow, that's four. really uncharacteristic from Afu. He yeah. missed that on a guy standing still. Actually, he thought and he had vision too with the ward up there. I guess he thought Enu was going to move. I guess he thought he would see them and then he would start trying to run back and block him off that way. But yeah. Envy didn't move, so sometimes, sometimes AFK is the best strat. <laughs> Uh, when it comes to Naga, the um, the farm thing is definitely real. That you it takes away farm from others, but you want to try to split up the map so Naga farms the enemy jungle with illusions. Yeah. Because then your team can still farm their own half. And if you manage to set up that condition, then you're out farming your opponent because you're farming two jungles and the lanes. Um, it's it gets easier the more farm Naga gets. Obviously, the early illusions are very fragile. But. Oh, he needs to get the Radiance first. This will yeah. be a Roche for the Radiant team. There's no Moonlight Shadow. There's no Song. They traded for Tier 2 Bottom, perhaps. Oh, no, never mind. Never mind. There's a Blink Dagger available as well, but it gets cancelled for the moment. In Flame has got Blink Blast, so might go for Fata. Does go for Fata. He actually is going not just for Fata. He's not done. He wants MSS as well. More of a more hit will do it. He gets a double. Very nicely done. Pylite die. That ward. He knows exactly where he is. And they can get that kill. Three kills and a Roche. Triple kill for Bat. And, and, oh and in the meantime, we weren't watching it, but uh, there was another kill. Oh, they, who killed Envy? Someone killed Envy. Super he, killed Envy. He got Envy. killed by the DP. Man, LFY are just destroying 
that that sequence of events was like very well coordinated. They go Roche with two heroes. They realize Cloud9 are not going to contest it. So they split the rest of their lineup into two different segments. One that kills the bottom heroes and then the DP that goes straight in and kills the Naga. Yeah, he had the, he very, had the vision, nice. of course. And that was still also before he was able to buy the, the relic. So slowing down and V again. First strike. They want to try and go for this. Global Silence coming out as well. Oh, he got the yours off before he got dueled. Yep, no duel just there. And he might be able to turn this around. The Silence is there. The Siphon is there as well. And the Shackle MSS will be the first to drop. Can they chase it for more is the question? Or, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Does get the kill off. Super's already looking for another, but the rest of Cloud9 already scattered. I say that. Fada might not be so lucky though. He leaps away. Mune chasing him down. AY dead. Uh, Fada decides to go farming. Oh, he got, oh, he got a foo! I think was that that was. I think he was just farming. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> I mean, I, he might have. He might have seen him out the corner of his eye there. I'm not he sure. he could have. He could have. Oh, envy. Envy uh, might actually same die again. Same place. In case you're wondering how he died last time, it was like this. If he dies here, that is a couple. Of, yeah, that is. That is. That is actually the same way he died previously. That ward has had massive value so far. Two might have messed. Uh, yeah, might have been. Oh, but yeah. Yeah. That's, oh, yeah. That's true. They first first they failed the kill that was free. Yeah. And after that, they got two kills on him. And this ward is still standing. They really need to get rid of that. Super is getting so much value out of that. But you know, Cloud Nine. This moment made us just. Oh, Naga. Or actually, that's a bad rider. Pardon me. Well, that is also that was a Legion commander. Yeah. And uh, there, the wards uh, for Shadow Shaman are dropped on the top tier too. The mistiming that they had on that kill mid is so expensive. They blink stun with Sand King, they want to blink duel into global, but the Sand King goes so much earlier than Legion that Legion couldn't connect the duel before Yules came out out of the Sand King stun. Another the moment that Yules came out, the fight was over. And they, that's a problem, right? They commit, they commit Sand King stun and global silence to force a Yules. Yeah. And that should have definitely forced a DP kill and maybe a secondary kill and a tier 1 tower mid. So that fight in itself is like a 2 to 3k gold swing. And we would have had a very different game because Cloud9 could have, you know, got a couple of key items out of that maybe, or delayed enough to get the radiance. But now this late radiance I mean, is gonna be so late. He there. only just has the relic. Oh, bottom lane. There's gonna be a duel. Yeah, is it gonna be a successful? Except, one? Yeah. Looks like it is. Oh, that's AY helping out. Uh, big kill also in mid lane as Fata gets shackled and Monet comes there to take the killing blow. By the way, Shadow Shaman still hasn't died yet. DDC, he's uh. I think he's the star player so far for me on LFY in the games that I've seen from uh, from LFY. So he's everywhere. He's very rich the Siren as well. Forced. DDT has been playing very well this game. It's, uh, just the try the way they played the try line in the start was very very good. Like, uh, the timings were pretty much perfect with just reaching the last hits with his final the shock two or three times in a row. LFY just look on a completely different level. This is yep. this is something. This is quite something. It's just Afu that has been having a rough game. We've seen a couple of missed fishers from him, and he's uh, he's still uh, struggling to. Oh, he just got his blink dagger. Yep. There you go. Got the blink. Twenty minutes. It's not even that bad, at all. It's worrying for other teams if Afu can have a and I don't want to call it a bad game, but he's definitely had some mess ups here, and they're still just destroying Cloud9. Like this yeah. game is not even close. They're just getting run over. All right. So, what does what does Cloud9 need to do? Because they are on the back foot. They know this. They know also that later on in the game, they have a better shot of fighting. So, they need to delay yeah. this game. How are they going to do that? I think the the in this position, you have to just try to control your at least your own side of the map as much as you can. Just get wards up around your own jungle, so Naga at least has has that as some somewhat of a safe zone. Yeah. And then maybe the rest of the squad can try to go look for kills once the the LFY lineup has been forced to split up a little bit, then you can Moonlight Shadow into a key kill or something like that. Uh, Naga can't get involved right now. Envy has okay. to farm, and after he has Radiance, he has to farm more, and then a bit more. Uh, the problem is LFY might not give them the time. I'd rather, if you think about how this game went wrong, this is this is the point where it's almost too late to make the right moves. Uh, okay. The opportunities that they had were about five to 10 minutes ago. They were definitely in reach of getting control back in the game. But those couple of fights that went really wrong just swung LFY into like a, this extremely powerful position. And it's almost already going to take a big mistake from LFY to uh, to bring Cloud9 back in the game. He just is down at least, and Naga got the top tower, so yep. that is the Radiance up. 
21 minutes in. Oh, they know AY is close by. And they Let's see if this Fisher redeems a, a foo from Fisher. Nah, he's not going to be able to get it. Oh, well, now he's thinking about it again. He changed his mind. Because Bat Rider is coming up. Well, he's got another blink available. <laughs> uh -oh. oh. Hey, hello. Whoops. Ah, he's going to die here. Like two ships passing the night. Yeah, Perfect he's right. Global Silence coming out. This is to save AY. I say that, but there's a fight happening on bottom as well. They will we be able to kill the Sand King. We're going to go bottom because this is Cloud9 looking for a fight. They know that there's people up top. They go for the troll. This is not going to be a duel one, though, but it is going to be a troll down. And DDC finally, maybe, for the first time in the game, he's going to try to joke this out. Nah, he's not going to be able to. Two That's kills. That's really big for Cloud9, actually. Massive. And worth sacrificing a Sand King for. Yeah, that's twenty. That's a two K gold swing, and Envy got eight hundred. So that's that's the kind of stuff that they need. So now that Naga has radiance, I said Naga can't get involved, but if they can enforce these situations where they outnumber, then Naga will be obviously able to join the fights and get look for these kills. Uh, mainly, just how much time AUI bought and all the information he got his team allowed them to go for this play bottom. He yep. he told them there's two guys on my tail top. They're chasing me forever, and that was enough for C9 to find that opening in the bottom lane take full advantage. That's actually just, just straight up boots of travel for Envy. He just got 2,000 gold in one minute and a half. Oh, that's crazy. He's uh, catching up a little bit on the net worth. Indeed, and with no ages, LFY is going to delay maybe their uh, their adventure adventures into the dire ter territory again. I might wait for the next Roshan. Yeah. I mean, they're still in a very comfortable position. I don't think this is going to phase them too much, but you still got to be a little bit careful when you're playing against Naga that you don't make too many mistakes like that in yeah. a row. Especially not since you did get a Radiant, so... You can actually come into fights and, and make a difference. Bottom tower will be falling. Oh! oh. Hey, UI. Uh, hello! Did he see? Gets the Hex up still, but... Uh... Wow, he got... Oh, they got the kill with just the Radiance. That was yeah. actually very nice. They didn't need to bring in the duel for that. And uh -huh. Get their Legion killed. Forced like two or three TPs. The tower will get denied. But C9 are, again, this is, this is a good move. Creating some space. They freed up their own jungle with that move, knowing that everybody of LFY is now back in their own jungle. Exactly. They forced multiple rotations and still got the... The, the tower got denied, but it still it opens up the map. Naga yep. wants an open map. That's the best. The best map, Naga. open map. Best map. 2017. I mean, there's a lot of debate about the best map, but best map, open map, hereby. <laughs> At least if you are... I like D Dust 2. You like what? D Dust 2. It's a map in Counter-Strike. You never played CS? Yes, yeah, sometimes, but I don't... Oh. You don't remember Dust 2? Dust 2, yes. Dust 2. But oh. I know by Dust 2, I, I heard D Dust 2. Oh, it's because they're called D-E underscore Dust 2. That was the, the name of it. Okay. Back in CS. You sound like you're really interested and want to keep talking about CS. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it in your face, you're just, uh, your eyes are... Glazing <laughs> over. <laughs> <laughs> you look so disappointed. <laughs> I actually do like watching these go, I just don't like playing it as much because my aim sucks. Alright, back I, I, to Dota I'm, I'm not good at it either. S4, however, is very good. Uh, yeah, I've heard, I've players. heard there's a lot of Dota players that are actually very good at CS. Uh, they also heard that there's a lot of Dota players really good at Dota. And uh, we are looking at some right now. This there's is an important smoke play. Yeah, they are looking for Envy. Maybe well, they've not got, anymore, they're they? going to pincer the Sand King at least. Yeah, should be one kill. I think uh, Cloud9 are happy with this if Envy gets out. They can live with this. He's Moonlight Shadowed, can travel. And yeah, Batter is going the wrong way. Oh, he actually has a gem, so Envy had to be very careful there. But yeah. Walk the right way. No, they, they scan now, but it's a bit late. Yep. Should have done it straight away. That's true. If they had if they had gone for that that exact scan, I think Envy would have died. Yeah, he could have blinked over. Yeah. yeah right play. But uh, LFI, they get a Sand King, and they get the opportunity perhaps to pressure top lane a bit, force some rotations in if they really want to. And you see the illusions of uh, Envy just splitting the map, just having pressure everywhere, and that already forces uh, Monet back. Hey, Roshan's gold. Cool. Yep. I didn't realize that yet, sorry. That happens when any of the players in the game has a level 2000 or higher compendium, and that is and not that's a joke. Envy, right? I think so. Look, because he has the thing next to his name. Yeah, oh, he, he has, has the Roshan, Roshan next to his Roshan. health bar. Yeah. I was wondering where that was. 
Hey, this dire scan is why is this not oh, oh, that is not good. Why did that happen? Oh, so they wanted to blink stun the DP and then global, but they were not in position to use it and the stun miss. So Cloud9 just mistimed that completely. This is but that's a, Roche. That's a free Roche, yeah. They can't fight those for that global. They can oh, try to steal it with Song. They might actually do that. Yeah, they're thinking about it. Arrow yeah. flying in as well. well uh, maybe oh, yes, maybe no. Monet will hit that. 50-50. This is so big if they can steal this. That's one of the big benefits of Naga Siren. That the song doesn't work on Roche. Oh, they're gonna fight first. They're gonna fight first. Oh, Leaking nice. Silence from Super. Yeah, silence on both. Echo as well. That is already Envy out of the picture. They're chasing down AOI. He popped the shrine. Trying to get out. But I think just like his buddy, just like MSS, he'll drop two. That's a double kill for Super. Three dead. Are you going back for Roche or are you gonna push top? Because top's pushing in. Roche is dead. Did they actually finish Rose in that Charles time? Charles was rushing meanwhile. He's like, oh, keep hey, it up, guys. <laughs> Very nice. Good job, everybody. I'm All just... right, well done. I'll just take this Rosh and uh, yeah, you make sure I'm left alone. Sure. It, the thing about the thing that's so beautiful about this is how easy LFY made that look. And yeah, they that, did. That is very difficult, what they just did, but it looked so easy. That's the silence then, too. The well. clutch silence, really nice movements, like the way they collapse on the fight from the multiple angles, the way they distribute their heroes exactly the way they do to find the targets that they get. DP is like, I'm going to silence this Naga, then you echo. Meanwhile, Troll does Roche, and Batrider opens the fight by lassoing the silencers. So they just force a fight to happen, and at that moment, they know the song will come out, so they instant counterplay that one and just play from the rest. Just textbook stuff. This looks like a team that will go far in this tournament. This is some of the most impressive just coordination I've seen so how does far that, in the cast. How do you think that happens? Is that someone that actually calls like that specific thing? Or is that just... Instinct? Them being like instinct, yeah. Uh, it's a bit of both, I think. You you can't communicate everything exactly. uh, in in complex situations like that. So people because it goes of, too fast. Yeah, you need to understand and have just a team cohesion idea of how you play these situations. So that's something you drill, you practice. Yeah. Uh, how to approach the Roshan pit in these fights? How to play the periphery? How to position yourselves? How to use these specific heroes? And uh, then the rest of it is communication. But it it might have gone down as simply as. I'm going to lasso the silencer, make sure you silence the Naga, and that's it. That's enough to start that fight, because Batrider sees the opportunity, and the DP is in position. The rest of the fight almost plays itself out. What's impressive about that is how they set up the conditions to do that exact thing, and how those two coordinated. Everything else that happened was, you know, just following those two plays. Because what make Ur makes Urshaker going for the Naga rather than for the Legion? Like, Legion was lassoed, yet Afu goes for the Naga. Wasn't that silencer like who was lassoed? Or... Uh, it might, might have been, been Legion. Silencer. I'm not sure. Those heroes look the same, right? They do, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not. Someone. I'm not positive. I think he just goes for the Naga because if Naga dies, there's no disengage. Uh, killing the Naga off immediately. Yeah, I guess he had the song the available, so exactly. that was the priority, That's highest priority on the, on the list there. All right, I'm checking, keeping track of the predictions. All right, I was wrong on the triple kill. The first triple kill was Batrider. But we're we're good on Who LFY. Who predicts Batrider to get a triple kill? Yeah, we're good on LFY and we're good on ne neutral camp stacked. All right, are we good with uh, Father magical damage? Oh, not yeah. at all. Most damage is clearly the Batrider. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Oh, AY alive for the moment. This jewel though, Monet is the one taking the damage. AY trying to get himself out. He's invisible. Monet finds him because invisibility wore off. That is one dead Sam King. In the meantime, Super's in the base. He eats the cheese. Alive for the moment. Lasso catches Fada. That is an Agonin's Lasso because it wasn't just Fada that was lassoed. It was Envy as well. Echo Slam to finish it off. GG is called. LFY undefeated. Yet again. Still, rather. Yeah. Oh, I... Woo! This team's good. They are really, really good. They are really good. Um, I think this is a team to watch for other teams in this tournament and also outside of the tournament to to learn something about how to I think the most impressive thing overall for me in this game was the way they distributed the resources on the map they're very very good at moving for each other and uh, sending the correct amount of heroes a lot of the times teams are like overcompensating and they bring too many heroes and sometimes they bring too few it felt like LFY just had just the right amount of, of heroes every time for the moves they needed to make and then positioned very well so great stuff from them yeah we got two out of four predictions Shiver. Uh, we didn't get the magic or pure damage. That was by Batrider. Again, that's not a hero you expected. <laughs> Batrider did so much magic damage in this game, and the triple kill did also go the way of Batrider. But in the rest was good. Bat. two out of four. We'll take it. Yep, we'll try again next game because LFY and Cloud9 will play their second game in just a moment. So stay tuned for more Dota 2.